How many of you like bananas? How many of you like bruised bananas? <laughs> well, I don't think anyone really wants to eat this banana. Well, not many people want to eat this banana. So why don't we invent something called the banana saver? And that's exactly what Mary Harris did. Mary Harris was my innovator. She's um, my little sister's best friend's mom. And um, she is a hardworking mother who um, worked full time at a company as um, someone who talked to the customer. She was all about customer service. And therefore, you can kind of see what her mindset is. She's more of a caregiver. She's a family mom. She's a customer service representative. So when she's packing lunches, she realized these lunches keep coming back with bananas. I know my kids love bananas. Why do they keep coming back? Well, it's because they're bruised. And kids look at it and go, ew, I don't want to eat that banana. So this is what she came up with. She is the founder, the president of Banana Saver. She is a mother, and she is an innovator. But the question isn't, what hat does Mary Harris wear? It's, what hat doesn't she wear? Mary Harris wears every single one of these hats. She started this business by herself. She had to figure it out. Um, she had to be the director of everything. She had to say, OK, how do I make this dream come true? What is this dream? Why do I want to pursue it? What alternatives do I have? What has been done? Every single one of these hats she had to wear. So I asked her, what is innovation? And basically what she said was coming up with idea that fills a need. Obviously, since she came up with this cute little plastic container that will hold your banana and keep it from being bruised in your lunch, which I totally forgot in my room. <laughs> then I asked her, can innovation be taught? And she said, of course it can. And she highly encourages that it be taught in our schools. When I told her about this program, she was incredibly excited to hear about it. I asked her where her idea came from. And as I just explained to you, it's as she was a mother, packing lunches, just observing what was happening. And she knew that this happened to a lot of other people. So why not make it something that, why not make something that others will be using? So who did she actually need to make this process work? Well, she needed molders, she needed designers, and she needed engineers. So she went to three different companies for these three different things. And this where her biggest mistake was made. Um, she feels as though with, if she didn't do this, she definitely would have had less problems because each person would blame the other person if something went wrong. And she had to jump around and try to figure out how to work it. But even before figuring out um, who she needed in that aspect, she needed an attorney because she went to the Cleveland Public Library to research other patents and ideas that were already out there, making sure that her project was an original one. She found one that was a little bit similar from Canada. And so she had to get a patent attorney and say, please research this for me. I can't do it all by myself. You know all the legal aspects. So you need a lot of different people to make this happen. So I asked her what the process she actually went through. And the first thing she did was she went to that Cleveland Library, and then she hired the attorney because there was another possible company. And you don't want to go through the entire process and then later realize, well, it's already happened. So she did this first thing, and she really didn't make any other mistakes of different companies, which I thought was really impressive for a first-time inventor. Then I asked her what stops or slows the process. And she said it was people who want to make money. She did this because she wanted to make money. If it flopped, it flopped. She was excited to do it. She was excited to try out her idea. So don't push against an idea just because you want to make money, obviously, as Guy Kawasaki spoke on that one. And slowing the process, politics always slows the process, going through the government. Her patent's still pending from 2004. I asked her what the price was of becoming an innovator. And I believe that um, the biggest price that she stated was that pretty stressful. Um, especially if you're the main 
breadwinner in the family. Fortunately for her, this wasn't the case because her husband has a very steady job and she could have worked part-time and been totally fine. So she was able to make her own hours, which were some of the rewards. Um, she was able to spend time with her kids. She was able to do something she loved. And that's really the biggest reward, being an innovator, getting to do something that you love. And then I asked her for some words of advice for people like us who want to be innovators, who are trying to make the right decisions and step along the correct paths. And she said, never give up, which is definitely something that I've learned a lot throughout my like, Gold Award project and everything through high school, through our skateboarding project, we're having issues. And really, that's the best advice, never give up. She said that this process is step forward and two steps back. But you have to keep plowing along if you want to make any progress. Um, she says don't cut corners in who you deal with. Like she, um, you have to go with not just the lowest quote price, but someone who you know is going to be able to get the job done. If you go with the lowest quote and they can't do it for you, you're setting yourself up for failure. She also use your resources. There's a bunch elderly people in Cleveland who are retired and they'll just they have this database where there's a bunch of them and go to them with ideas and they'll help you to get the process done. They'll just sit there and do it for you. So these are some pictures of the product. Unfortunately I don't have it in front of you to show you. But um, as you can see it's versatile. She's got the hole for the stem. She's got a latch that won't break. Um, and there's also a slot for putting popsicle sticks in and so it's not just for keeping them in lunches but you can also freeze them and put chocolate on them that fun stuff yeah these are some of the different magazines and articles that she's appeared in uh, she's also a dealer she was called a parentpreneur and she's been doing amazing and she's been getting a lot of support and a lot of feedback back uh, she has a ton of happy customers, and I'd like to read some of the quotes. I think they're wonderful. My husband saw your product at Mustard Seed Market in Akron. I couldn't believe how excited he was to buy it. He takes a banana to work with him every day and was tired of these bananas. He loves your product. Irina from Chicago, Illinois. Thanks so much. We saw your ad in Parents Magazine. What a great idea for kids. My daughters love bananas. Taking them to school always mushes them up. This is a great idea. This is from Jennifer in St. Catharines. Uh, Ontario. Ontario. <laughs> so, this is my favorite. I just ordered a six pack of banana savers. I love the idea. I am stationed in Okinawa, Japan, in the Marines. I am very active in marathon cycling and triathlon races here. On December 3rd, I will be taking about 200 Marines on their first marathon. I always have them bring bananas and cliff shots. This is not to mention the cycling teams I ride with. The tour de Okinawa goes on every year as well as other races. As a cyclist, we always carry bananas, and we all hate bruised ones. I ride and train nearly 50 riders. To say, the market. I'm confident locals, Okinawa, and Japanese would be interested as well. Simplify. Patrick, Japan. So I picked personas that I thought described Mrs. Harris. She's obviously an anthropologist. This is how she got her idea, by watching what others really needed. She's a hurdler. She had to go through those different companies. She had to figure out the entire process by herself. She was you know, a mother of two. She was a stay-at-home mom for a little while, part-time for a little while. She didn't know anything about this process. She just knew customer service. Uh, a director, obviously. She did all this by herself, and she's the president of her own company. She has her workspace in the basement, and has a tour that, and it's just like a mother's store, basically. She has this entire back room of boxes galore and then more boxes full of the product and then a packaging area and it's right out of her basement. She makes hundreds of thousands of dollars from this basement stuff and it's wonderful. Obviously a caregiver which goes with the anthropologist because you know she's a mother, she saw what was necessary and she did it. She wants to let you know that you need a friend banana saver on Facebook and let all your friends know about it. I'm sure your parents would be completely enthusiastic about the idea. Thank <laughs> you.